I like sex. Sex with women. Women who must have sex. With, that's not how I should start this issue. As a man, why don't I just play the intro first? Actually, it's too late. Forget about the intro, maybe next time. I talk a lot about all the bad stuff in Islam, but I am a man, which you can probably tell because I have a beard. If you don't have a beard, you are a woman. It's simple. One reason why I regret leaving Islam is that I have officially lost the opportunity to have my own beautiful, exciting virgins in heaven, for example, with big eyes, beautiful boobs, untouched, pure virgins, that serve me, that I can have sex with whenever I want, for all eternity, a gift promised by the great Allah to every true believing man. Because Allah knows what's best for every man and what every man wants, what every man needs. This is one of the more reasonable aspects of Islam that I can fully relate to. <laughs> of course, I'm just kidding. I'm not an animal. You know, in Islam, you are promised sexy women in heaven who are there for your pleasure, beautiful women, satisfying you while you are reclining on your throne and drinking wine from rivers of wine. <laughs> so stupid. There is no way to deny this because it sounds so ridiculous, so idiotic, so primitive. Many modern pop Muslims today try to make this go away and reinterpret it, claiming some very absurd stuff like that the Quran was actually describing fruit in heaven. But the Quran is very clear on these virgins, and Muhammad describes further that men will receive beautiful women that are like nothing else. Attractive women with beautiful breasts, skin so soft and white that you can almost see their bones. And they are shy, as strong 7th century men liked them. A fantasy that men had in a very primitive culture, such as 7th century Arabia, or other cultures that were so uneducated that the only thing they could think of, the only thing that they could glorify, were basic human functions and their perversion. Where the human intellect had not developed to a remotely sophisticated level and shape, and could therefore not contribute to humanity. Sadly, Islam is the embodiment of all that. I'm talking about this because I want people to understand what growing up in such a messed up mindset with such a terrible belief does to people. Of course, it teaches men to objectify women and to view them as inferiors who should, who have to satisfy the sexual needs of men. Is it a surprise that so many Muslim men so often have such terrible attitudes toward women? That the Islamic world sucks when it comes to women? Is it a surprise that Muslim women are so often treated so horribly? This is not mature content, by the way. I mean, I learned this stuff when I was a child, just like so many other Muslims. And that must be appropriate, right? I mean, Aisha was six when she married the Holy Prophet, and she didn't wait very long until she had sexual intercourse with him, which happened when she was nine. Obviously, it's appropriate for a six-year-old or a nine-year-old boy to learn about all the beautiful, fantastic virgins that he will have if he just believes in Islam. As a Muslim, you are born mature and you die mature for immature virgins in heaven. Seriously, I learned this stuff as a child. I knew about the concept as I was growing up. And I was in Germany, where girls and boys are together, where women and men are friends, colleagues. We are equal. And while on the one hand I learned that women and men are just the same, despite our natural differences and interests, on the other hand I learned that I, as a man, will be given sex servants, beautiful sex servants in heaven. Growing up with that thought completely distorts your view on sexuality, of women, of girls. It gives you the idea that the women outside and in your household are just inferior to you as a man. Inferiors who become wives and who take care of children and of the sexual needs of men, men who are in charge of them, while you grow up to be a man who will have more specifically created women in heaven that are much more beautiful than all these women here. It makes people hypersexual. It teaches big misogyny. It teaches women to serve, to not disappoint their men, and it teaches men to be dominant, to abuse. It is a disgusting system that debilitates society and makes people sick. I'm sorry, I've always liked women. Always thought they were beautiful, awesome, special. I liked to befriend women. And the idea of love and sex is of course great. But I never thought that I as a man deserve to have subservient women who are given to me as a reward because I am a good man, because I just desire sex with inferior women. I was never as disgusting as to believe that I deserve my own mindless sex slaves in heaven. Creations for my sexual needs. In fact, when I was a Muslim, I didn't really want that. Even when I was highly religious, I never wanted that. When I asked older, more wise Muslims, including scholars, about that, I was told that if I desire no virgins in heaven, but Allah clearly promises virgins to me in the Holy Quran, 
then it cannot be that I am the one with the better mind and morals. Allah knows best and He knows me best. He knows what I need and what I want. I should trust him who knows my nature. I was reminded of this Quran verse which says, perhaps you hate something which is good for you, and perhaps you love something and it is bad for you. Allah knows while you do not know. Funnily enough, this verse is actually an encouragement for those who don't like fighting to fight for Allah, for which you are also promised virgins in heaven, by the way. I didn't grow up so messed up, but I grew up confused, because I learned that this is what I'm supposed to believe, and I found that very strange, and I questioned that. Maybe it was therefore too obvious that this religion was never for me, and I'm very glad that I left it behind, because Allah and I clearly have our differences concerning morals. In Islam, a regular Muslim man receives virgins in heaven. A martyr receives many more brilliant virgins in heaven. And someone who fights for Allah can apparently obtain slave girls from the wars that he fights. Because he has strived for Allah and now he deserves to have sex with slave girls because men are apparently supposed to be rapists. I'm not a rapist. It is so messed up that this absolutely insane god Allah, who evidently doesn't exist and who was entirely made up by a 7th century desert savage, who didn't have a proper sense of good and bad, and right and wrong, and who was apparently the best man that a primitive culture in the cruel, undesirable desert of 7th century Arabia had to offer. It is so messed up that this god is supposed to see you as natural rapists who deserve to have sex slaves, many women, and additional beautiful women, much better than all those earthly women up in heaven. Many Muslim apologists seriously have a huge lack of logic and come and say stuff like, you know very well that you desire sex, and what is bad about being rewarded with women in heaven that you can have sex with, that you can enjoy because now you are in heaven and everything will be amazing. You can just do whatever you want. That's very messed up because I'm pretty sure that many women have the same desires. They, they would also like to have a lot of sex with different people if you, as a man, seriously justify that desire. So why don't women have amazing looking men in heaven that they can have sex with whenever they want? Such a thing doesn't exist in the Quran. The Quran strangely promises little good looking boys as servants in heaven, but those are just servants for everybody in heaven. There is no equivalent for women. And just bringing this up would make a Muslim man say, what are you talking about? That's disgusting. A woman is supposed to have one husband. No, sorry. Naturally, the desires of women are not that different. You are just making excuses for yourself because that's what you like. Also, are we seriously supposed to accept that Allah simply meets your natural desires? Couldn't Allah just change you? I mean, it is in Allah's hands how you are, how heaven is, how the world is. He could simply put you into heaven and say, you don't need sex anymore. Sex is not necessary here anymore. This is a place where you don't have earthly pleasures, where you don't need to procreate and use your penis to enter a vagina. But we can't really get anywhere with logic. If we are facing Islam, a religion that thinks men deserve everything because men are in charge, men are strong, men take care of business, while women are just stupid, they need men. They should just be quiet and stay in their house, cover themselves up, stay away, stay out of sight, just do their jobs. What a perverted, disgusting worldview. How can you possibly trust the moral judgment of Islam and Muslim apologists when they think I am the bad one for saying that owning personal sex virgins and sex slaves is bad? This is how morally twisted Islam is and how it clouds your moral judgment and it damages your personality. I could now talk about sexual frustration as a Muslim in Islamic culture, but that would take forever and it's a quite rough topic. I will definitely do that at some time. By the way, before you go, I don't highlight this enough, but I should emphasize that these women are untouched, pure virgins, as pointed out in the Quran and the Hadith. Guess how that makes Muslims feel about women and virginity and divorced women who already had sex, for example. In the West, we often think of the Vikings who would raid and rape. Stop thinking about the Vikings. Think about the Islamic empires, which were large empires that had organized armies of rape in order to conquer the world and spread the religion of peace. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, smash the like button like an Islamic martyr would smash. <laughs> no. Please like this video and don't forget to subscribe for more. Most of my videos are obviously not monetized. If you want to support me at my cause and want to help me make more videos for the enlightenment about Islam, you can support me on Patreon or on apostateprofit.com. I appreciate your help so much. I will be back. Have a great day and stay away from Islam.